We are living in very interesting times, and let me tell you why, because in the next 5, 10, 15 years, a lot of jobs today, industries and businesses today, are going to be extinct. And this is so scary for the bigger companies out there, but it's so exciting for the smaller, nimble companies and entrepreneurs that are coming up. Why? Here's why. Because we're about 5, 10, 15 years away from somebody coming out with an idea after a major disruption where someone's gonna be called a trillionaire, not a billionaire, in the next five, 10, 15 years. So I'm gonna give you a lot of different industries that are about to go extinct, and I'll put the given out, the ones that everybody knows about. I'm not covering the ones that you've heard many different times, such as you know, publishers, newspapers, magazines, cashiers, travel agents, manufacturing workers, bank tellers, taxi drivers, radio, GPS. I'm not covering those. I'm assuming you already know those are gonna be extinct here very soon. I wanna give some new ones here that we haven't talked about before in the past. So let me get right into it. First business. I think restaurant, the game of restaurants is gonna change dramatically. Now let me explain what I'm not talking about. I'm not talking high-end restaurants. Why am I not talking about high-end restaurants? Because for as long as long as husband and wives have kids, they're going to want to step away from their kids and go to a private place away from everybody, the noise, the madness. And sometimes the best way to do it, to do it is just let's go to a nice dinner. Let's go to a nice restaurant. I'm talking about a whole different thing. Let me explain to you what I think we're headed towards. I think this is what's coming next. Imagine you and your wife, you and your girlfriend, you and your husband, you and your boyfriend are sitting and you're going to say, babe, I'm tired today. I don't want to cook. Really, babe, you want to go to a restaurant? No, I just don't want to. I just want to stay at the house. I just don't want to go out. Okay, so what do you want? You want to order some takeout? No, I kind of want some real food, some really good food. Babe, I don't know. What do you want to do? Why don't we hire a chef? So hiring a chef used to be for the rich, right? Like, you remember how the rich people had drivers? You know who has drivers today? Everybody has a driver. It's called an Uber driver. You don't need to be a millionaire to have a driver. In the 90s when you said, my driver will be picking me up. Oh my gosh, that's a rich man right there. Not today. Today, chefs, I have my own chef. No one's going to care if you got your own chef in the next couple years because you're going to get on an app. What do you feel like eating, baby? I feel like sushi. Okay, great. There's this chef here that's a four and a half star, 328 reviews. And I checked his availability. He's available tonight between six and eight. Should we book him? What's his rate? $25 an hour. Book him, baby. Boom, boom, boom. Great. And there's a tip. He goes, he buys the food, he comes to your house, cooks everything fresh for you in your house, and this app is going to do a background check on the person who's a chef, just like an Uber driver is going to do a background check. They're going to do a background check. They will cook for you. You'll sit there. You'll eat a good, fresh meal cooked by a chef, and you're going to stay home and watch your movie and not go anywhere, someone's going to serve it to you. And then you're going to say, oh my gosh, this was great. What do you want to do next weekend, babe? Same thing. Do you want to go to a restaurant? No. I believe a model like that. Some of you are watching this saying, oh my gosh, has anybody come out with it? Possibly in small pockets, but there's obviously not a big one nationwide that everybody's using. When someone comes out with this, they will disrupt restaurant business in ways that fast food, all these guys are going to feel it immediately. You know why? Because what's the negative reputation fast food restaurants have? It's the fact that it's not healthy. You mean to tell me I can have a chef come to my house and he's cooking healthy food and I don't need to go anywhere? Yes, bring the chef, babe. Everyone's gonna have a chef. I think that's the direction we're going with restaurants. Number two is movie theaters. Movie theaters are about to get their tails handed to them. Here's why. I'll just give you some data before I make my prediction. Back in 2009, just go do the research here. Back in 2009, in America, 1.41 billion tickets were sold to the movies in a year. 1.41 billion tickets were sold, which means 300 million. There's some kids involved, give or take. We go to five movies per year on average as Americans. 1.4 billion tickets were sold. You know how many tickets were sold in 2017 last year? 1.2 billion. I'll have the exact data here on the screen for you to see it. 1.23 billion tickets were sold last year. We, we dropped 200 million tickets in only eight years. And it's going to get worse because all these buildings, these standalone theaters that are empty theaters, empty theaters all over the place that you're going to, they're going to get crushed. 
We like to sit home and watch movies nowadays. We have, a, we have stuff that we can watch on movie. We don't have to go anywhere to see it. It's getting more expensive. People are trying to charge it higher. Again, the high-end ones will do okay, just like high-end restaurants, because it'll become an experience. But we're going a complete different direction with movie theaters. And if they don't figure out a way to pivot and adjust, they're going to take a massive hit here coming uh, soon. Next one, telecommunication. This one some of you guys will be confused with. Listen, we no longer have house phones, yes? We no longer have car phones. You agree? Soon we will not be having any more smartphones. Now you may say, Pat, you are out of your mind if you think we're not going to have a smartphone. Can I ask you why you're paying $100 a month for your phone number? Why? Can somebody Skype you for free? Yes. Do you need a phone number for someone to Skype you? No. Do you need a phone number for somebody to Facebook you from all over the world? My friend called me from Brussels today for free on Facebook, right? Do you need a phone number for somebody to call you on Snapchat? No. What is my point? Why are we paying these telecommunication companies $100 a month? For what? If you want to call me, call me on my Facebook line. If you got 500 names on your phone, don't your 500 people on Facebook have your name, aren't friends with you anyways? So if they need to call you, they can easily call you. We don't need that anymore. So here's what happened. Data won't be going away because you will need this device to log on to social media, Facebook, all this other stuff. Yeah, you'll pay 40 bucks a month for this. You'll pay 20 bucks a month for data. Why are we paying 100 dollars a month for phones? They're about to get hit in a major way in the next 5, 10, 15 years once somebody figures these things out. And remember when I said this to you in 2018, once someone figures this out, everyone's going to say, why do I have a phone number? Go ask. After I explain it to you right now, you're watching this, ask your friends today all day. Why do we have a phone number? Just ask them and tell them exactly what I told you. See your friend's reaction, what they're going to say. You know what? I never thought about it. Why are we paying $100? Why are we paying $80? Why are we paying $90? This is another disruption that's about to take place. Next one, cars. Morgan Stanley just came out. Today, Morgan Stanley just came out, and this is what they said. They said General Motors should stop making cars in North America because they're currently worth negative $4 billion. Why? Look, you know, people say everything is getting more expensive. Believe it or not, a lot of things are getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Telephone's going to be cheaper, okay? A lot of things are getting cheaper if you, really be, if you really think about it. A lot of things are becoming free. You kind of have to give things away for free. There used to be a time we have to pay a lot of money for softwares. How many softwares today are free based on just Google and all these other things that we have access to? Cars about, are about to take a big hit because, one, this whole transportation deal with what's taking place. Again, high-end cars will be around because rich people want to be able to show with status and look at my $1 million car that I have here, Enzo, or $1 million, $2 million Bugatti I have here. Look at my Pagani. Look at all these cars. That's okay. But the regular day-to-day -day cars, we're not going to need it anymore. Someone's going to pick you up. You'll be transported somewhere. But the whole thing about having two, three, four cars in a family like we used to, that is going to be changing completely soon in the next 5, 10, 15 years. I'm telling you that is the direction we're going. I may be wrong, but that's what I believe. That's the direction we're going with that. Next one, I'll keep giving you a simple one. Wallets. We used to have photo albums. We no longer have photo albums. We just go on Instagram and Facebook. This wallet that is $300 by Gucci. Gucci, guess what? You got to stop making wallets. Because these things are going out of business. We no longer need wallets. I know people are making phone cases. Louis Vuitton's got phone cases, all this other stuff. Wallets, gone. Retailers, next one. I really feel bad for Walmart. Let me tell you why I like Walmart. The reason why I have affinity to Walmart, because when I was living in Kentucky, in this city that had no nightclubs, and I'm 18 years old, on Friday nights, you know where we would go to meet girls? We'd go to Walmart to meet girls. Our nightclub was called Walmart. So I have some kind of an affinity to Walmart. But Walmart, there's a business out there, okay, that's called Amazon. That's the closest thing to a monopoly today. And the president knows it's a monopoly. He's trying to push it for monopoly. A lot of people are trying to push it for monopoly. And if you think Bezos being worth $120 billion is a lot of money, wait till over the next couple of years, all of a sudden he's worth $300 billion in no time. Because Amazon is not slowing down. Amazon is one of the most dangerous companies in the world to competitors. Competitors go to sleep when they watch a movie with the Amazon River. They shiver and have nightmares all night long. Because all they know is this company is about to take their marketplace 
away from them. These retailers are becoming showrooms. What do we need a showroom for? They're simply helping Amazon. You're going to Walmart, you're taking a picture, then you're going to Amazon, you're paying something 20% cheaper. Amazon is helping uh, Walmart. Walmart is helping Amazon. Walmart has become Amazon's showroom. How pathetic is that? How many times have you gone to a store and you looked at something, you took a picture, you went online and bought it from Amazon? How many times have you done it? We do it all the time. What is the point? The point is these showroom businesses that rent out all this massive space, it's going to be going away. Because first of all, you're not going to be doing shopping anyways. It's going to be a, a whole, what do you call it, a warehouse type of deal. Someone's going to go shop for you. And they're going to, everything's going to be, someone's going to do it to you and come. These are jobs. Sure, someone's going to go and do it for and bring it to you. I want this stuff, I'm going to go buy it and bring it to you. This is the kind of direction we're going on. So this showroom type of stuff, you're only helping out a business like Amazon. Oh, next one. This is the one industry that I am a part of. And let me tell you what industry this is. This is the insurance industry. Listen up, insurance industry. Whether you're a PNC, property and casualty, life or whatever it is. Look. Underwriters, if you're an underwriter and you're watching this, hurry up and figure out a way to become an analyst, not an underwriter. Let me explain to you why. If I am hiring you and I want an analyst and I see that you've been an underwriter, your last job was an underwriter, it's already too late for you. I would be hurrying up and becoming an analyst very quickly and this is why. Look, underwriters get paid a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. Underwriters go to very good schools, they're great with math, actuaries, they have they study statistics, they're phenomenal with numbers, but they have positioned themselves in the wrong place. Because if I'm running an insurance company as a carrier, not the one that's selling it, as the carrier, I am investing currently today to the best kids coming out of Wharton Business School who were ridiculous in math, who were ridiculous in analytics, who were ridiculous in data. I'm hiring every one of these young cats and I'm bringing them and I'm telling them, figure out a way for me to make the cost of insurance be different on this, figure out a way for me to be able to maximize this without needing any underwriters because I'm eliminating another cost to me as a company. And that's exactly another direction we'll be going. Underwriters will be gone. An underwriter's mind will be replaced by a machine here very, very soon. Next. Next is journalists. Traditional journalists are going away. Listen, this whole thing about the amount of credibility journalists have today. Social media has hurt journalists. All these WordPress, the blogs, all these websites where you can go out and share your opinion, they're hurting journalists. Now, some people are saying, well, it doesn't yet hurt, hurt journalists because the best ones are coming up. Let me give you an example of what I mean by the best one. Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe posts something on his website. It gets hundreds of thousands of shares. He doesn't need to work for somebody. His website brings so much traffic that a business would be willing to advertise on his website for $50,000 a month, $100,000 a month. The guy's making a million dollars a year just on endorsements that he's getting. Why do I need to go be a journalist and tie my name to New York Times or LA Times or any of that stuff? The only reason these magazines and newspapers are going to be around is because a billionaire is going to come and buy a Washington Post, also known as Amazon's owner, which is who? Jeff Bezos. He owns Washington Post because I need to make sure I also control media a little bit. Another billionaire today just bought uh, LA Times. Just today, LA Times was just bought for only $500 million. You think it's for business? Purely for influence. You may buy because you want to control media, but you're not buying it because you're trying to make money off of it. It's going to be a completely different purpose for buying media. Not when you and I are thinking about. So journalism is going to be changing tremendously. Next, college, sports. Which one is a business, college or sports? Okay, so check this out, college sports. Which is a business, college or sports? You may say both. Okay, great, they're both businesses. Which one relies on the other one? Again, which relies on the other one? What do you mean, Pat? Without which one, is there not the other one? Uh, I don't know. Well, sports relies on what? Colleges. So, so stay with me here, this is gonna get a little crazy. Which one makes them a lot of money, a lot of attention? Sports brings them billions of dollars to these schools. So they have to make sure the college stays in business. Because if colleges don't stay in business, they don't have all this free money that's coming into them because they're not paying these athletes, right? Here's what I think is going to take place. This one's going to be a strange one, and I'm going to give a compliment to a very weird person, LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball right now is going around the nation and he's asking and tweeting out on Instagram, any great ballers in Chicago, ages this to this, come on down and we're going to do this. Listen, he may be crazy, but if there's somebody that's watching this right now saying, where's an opportunity for a league like a UFC, I'm going to tell you something here right now. If somebody can create a national league, a national league 
for kids between ages of 14 to 18 and a national league that competes with major league sports 18 to 20. I am, even though right now a lot of young kids go play for base, go play for uh, a basketball, they go early and you see some of them have to be a little bit longer for them to go in. I think there's a big opportunity right now for sports that doesn't have to do with colleges. It's just sports a level below the NBA, a level below the NFL, a level below that, that young cats are coming up. And I'm not even talking about D-League or any of this stuff. I'm talking about a real league where money's being made. If someone can figure out a way to do that without colleges being needed, because colleges are going away. Kids are not gonna be going to college the way we've been going to college. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's becoming a bigger and bigger business. And people are starting to realize and read between the BS that a four-year degree doesn't give me anything because things are changing so rapidly. I wrote a book on this called Drop Out and Get Schooled, and I got a ton of hate on it. How can you write a book called Drop Out and Get Schooled? Well, here's the thing. I'm a dropout. I, I didn't graduate college. I don't have a four-year or two-year degree. Well, Pat, you don't have the right to write a book like that. I didn't write it by myself. I wrote it with a guy named Thomas Ellsworth who got a four-year degree and has got a master's and was a professor at UCLA and Biola and Pepperdine. We both wrote it together and gave different views on why it's time to drop out and get school and why I believe 80% of college students shouldn't go to college. This thing's gonna change. But this doesn't mean that there is not an opportunity for somebody to go figure out a way to do things with sports. Next one is gonna be gas stations. Obviously gas stations are gonna be gone very quickly. This whole gas business in the 80s and 90s, I'm Middle Eastern. One of the things about Middle Eastern is we own a lot of gas stations. It's easy, you bring the money, you buy gas stations. It's like an annuity pays you on a monthly basis and it's pretty good amounts depending on how the market does. So we don't mind that, we like gas stations, but it's gonna change. Investing in gas stations today is a bad idea. Let me give you the last point here. Politics. This may not have to do with money, but it does. Let me explain to you what I mean by politics. This is the thing about politics. First of all, I don't agree with our current voting system that we have. And the reason why I don't believe with the current voting system that we have is the following reason. Let me explain something to you. Say I'm a 14-year-old kid, okay? Say I blow up because I'm sexy as hell, okay? Hypothetically, I look so good. And, and, and you know, I'm disruptive, I'm crazy, and I'm interesting, and all of a sudden, I have 145 million people following me, okay? And I grow up, and I have some opinions, I have some thoughts, and I'm very persuasive, and I'm very good with communication, and putting words together because I'm an artist, or whatever I am. And I start talking about some correcting and injustice. We are very soon gonna be seeing a 35, 36 year president in the United States of America. Very, very soon, we will be having a 35, 36 year president. And if it's only based on who has the biggest followership, and I try to figure out a way to minimize the debates, debates as much as possible, because if I'm good at what I do, I'll minimize the debates to the least amount that I have to be a part of to participate as a person that's registered to run for president. And if I can do my videos well, and I say, I don't come to debates. You want to debate me? I do it Facebook Live. That's the only way I do it. I don't come to physical debates. Somebody is going to see this and they're going to say, wait a minute, but you have to come to the debate. No, I don't. It never said I had to do this or criteria. Well, you have to come to these. I'll come to those. But if you want to vote for me, vote for me. And then all of a sudden we have a president that not knowingly may not be the best thing for us, but we just voted for somebody. Politics is about to change in a major way. I'm telling you right now, you're going to see political. You think this last political campaign was crazy with Twitter. You really think this was crazy? That was done by a 69-year-old man. Wait till it's done by a 36-year-old person that knows everything about social media, everything about all these bots and everything we're facing. And by the way, I'm not talking about just manipulation. I'm, not ta I'm talking about a marketer that's gonna come and disrupt the entire political game. Very, and by the way, it's gonna happen at the lower levels very easy. Congress, mayor, all that stuff, senator, nope. I'm talking at the highest level, which means the president. So there's a big opportunity there, but there's also attention to be paid to the political side and not just be too naive just because somebody's got a lot of following to go out there and pull that off because very soon you will see a candidate in America, a 35, 36 year old that's gonna say, I wanna be the president of the United States. Now, that's how the setup is. I don't want a lot of my American patriots that come and say, you know, you stop trying to change this. I'm not trying to change all that stuff. I'm just telling you, be aware. We be aware, you gotta adapt, you gotta pivot, you gotta adjust, because if you don't, you're gonna be the one that's gonna suffer the consequences. I'm simply making you aware, and by the way, I am very comfortable being wrong with every single one of the predictions that I made, but I don't think I'm wrong with every one of them. Having said that, again, questions, thoughts, comment below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, click right here to subscribe. 
uh, uh, to the channel as well. And by the way, we have a PDF on this as well below that you can download. Click on the link below for you to download the PDF that Mario's prepared for you. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>